recording. Greetings, everyone. This is Mr. Darby, and today we're going to talk about uh, one way of doing impressionist painting. So you can see right here, this is my impressionist uh, work I borrowed from the online interwebs. And um, we're going to basically briefly go over how to do this quickly today. I'm not going to do the whole work here. As you can see, I sketched out basically a rough idea of what I'm actually trying to paint. Um, and then I have my little water goblet thing here, and I have um, uh, paint, and then I dropped my paper towel, but that's okay. Um, I'll figure it out. And then, so actually, thank you. All right, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the work here. I'm going to squint my eye, and I, and I can do this on a program, and I can show you how to do that in class and how to help use Photoshop to help you do this. But I can see some values here, some really darks here, and there's less darks here, and then over here it's lighter and it's a little dark here. Here you got some dark and light. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick something. I guess I'm going to stick with the cup, and I'm going to go with the light area first, and I'm going to get a uh, thing of paint here, as you can see on there, and then I'm just going to go on here. And basically, I'm putting dabs of paint on here as such. And I'm going to have some over here. Um, a lot of the impressionists like to have the colors mix on their surfaces, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to grab some blue here. They hate using black. So I'm using some blues. And I'm going to mix the blues in there. And then I'm actually going to use a little bit of black. Um, ideally, I probably want to blend this as best I can, so that's why I'm kind of pushing the black and the blue together, kind of get that interest in there, and then I'm going to do some bluish black here, but I want to get a lot more white, get that gray quality. I'm going to go over that a couple more times, get that feeling of gray and get some white here as you can see the cup starting to take shape kind of it and there's a couple different ways you can do this and this is just one technique I'm doing a lot of this little dabbing as you can see it's not necessarily a perfect uh, but it does have that outline, and there's a lot of highlight right here in the cup. So I'm going to go back with the white. You kind of have to move fast. That's why a lot of people like to use oil. But acrylic, you can add, put some additives with it, and it can just act just like, um, just like oil. Um, so you need to actually think about this, because I actually didn't think before I started painting. Um, I probably would have uh, done maybe the background or um, this area before I started doing the cup here. Um, and it's no big deal since I started the cup. I'm going to finish the cup here. All right, and you can see I'm starting to get a really blue gray in here. And I'm going out to the lines, which is fine. So I'll get this in here, a little dark area. Clean my brush. And then I'll go back with some white. And get this thing going with this white my cup here. Make a happy little cup, just like Rob Ross. Of course, he made happy trees. And like so. Uh, it's not so bad. Um, and we'll worry about that later, but the most amazing invention is a hairdryer. So. Just blast this hair dryer. I'll probably take a little bit more time than that, but I don't want you to hear the hair dryer the whole time. So we'll move on real quick, and I'm going to go over to the background and so I'm going to go with this yellow background real quick make sure to clean the brush 
really well. And since I accidentally grabbed two things of water, I'll just switch to the clean water. That way some of the blue and gray won't go in there. And I'm going to take a look at the paper here. I see a lot of yellow, um, a lot of white, a lot of orange. So what I'm going to do is just grab my yellow and I'm just going to start laying down and here's some orange and lay this down there. And it looks like there's a lot more brown to it. So, and it doesn't have to be an exact match. That's not what we're trying to do in this uh, particular lesson today. Um, so I'm not too worried about matching the colors. If I was, then I would uh, make sure I mix my colors ahead of time or at least have the closer match to the colors. I'm not really worried about that. Um, Although I think that orange was way too bright. But that's the great thing about acrylic. You can just go over when it's dry and basically repaint it. And there's almost no harm. You just redo it. So I'm trying to put some color in here and make it look kind of like different values here. And I kind of like that, but it's way too orange on there. So let's see if it's too orange. We can add some blue to kind of gray it out. Uh, because that's a compliment. I don't really want to do that. So what I'm going to do is probably add a lot more yellow. And I am most likely going to let this dry and go back over that with some more yellow um, to make that less um, orange. So I'm going to kind of continue this over the whole uh, this area here since I had the color made. And then I'll go over this later. And we'll have that consistent color everywhere. It's won't be so um, bright. See, orange here. See, this is more where I was going for. It's right over here. So I need a light orange, and I put way too much of orange. So I'm going to let that dry. Add some, some blue. And see, I got some of that green mixed here, there, but I like that. So I'm leaving that. It's uh, artistic. Um, and so you can see there's lots of different ways to do this. Um, this is just a dab approach. Then there's some where you put a lot of paint on there, a uh, the really thick loaded brush, kind of impasto style, and then leave the, that big blob on there. So it really depends on how you want to paint. Like I said, this is only one way of uh, painting. Um, and you can do small dabs and large dabs and so forth. A well, big thing what you want to do is this is kind of one way to do it. This is without an undercoat, underpaint coat. You could do a whole paint everything in solid shapes and then go over that later. Um, and maybe I'll do a video on that, but right now this is basically an idea. Don't forget the biggest thing to do here is uh, um, look at your work, compare your photo to compare your work, add shadows, add value. You definitely want to work and try to get that the sh shadows here so we have that uh, mid tone, then we have the highlight, and then it starts to go around the cup to the darker. So that's something we should be working on. So keep that in mind. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.